On February 1st, 2017, Milo Yiannopoulos came to Berkeley. Milo is this guy, a senior editor for Breitbart, a far-right publication whose editor-in-chief is now one of the most powerful and dangerous people in the country, Steve Bannon. Milo rose to fame during Gamergate, a movement which quickly turned into a harassment campaign against women, and more recently as a champion of the so-called alt-right, a movement which quickly turned into Donald Trump representing America on the world stage. And Berkeley is this school, which in addition to being known as an elite public university for its contributions to academics, is home to this, the free speech movement. In response to student activism relating to the Vietnam War and the civil rights movement of the 1960s, University of California President Clark Kerr tightened enforcement of the university's policy that looked to hinder political speech on campus. It was a rule from the 1930s originally meant to distance the school from communist sympathizers in the Bay Area. But the student activists of the 60s were counterculture rebels, railing against the repression of their political expression. And in the spirit of railing against the repression of political expression, we bring you to 2017. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of students turned out to peacefully demonstrate. It's worth noting that most of the violent actions depicted in the news media were done by groups that were not affiliated with the university or its students. There's been a vicious debate over political correctness over the past couple years, a debate that I've kind of had a front row seat to. The side against political correctness says that colleges have become these cocoons for coddled babies who are afraid of opinions counter to their own and must develop safe spaces in order to make each other feel comfortable while they share their fringe beliefs that are fringe to the rest of society. Proponents, on the other hand, will say that college campuses allow for students to create a dialogue, a new dialogue, one that goes against a society filled with racism, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia. They have the opportunity to cultivate communities that, get this, aren't actively hostile towards marginalized groups. And the phrase, actively hostile towards marginalized groups, would actually kind of describe Miley Yiannopoulos pretty well. Here's my point. Milo is nothing more than a high-profile internet troll, and I know how to stop him. Milo, like everyone else on the internet, hello humans, relies on influence and relevance in order to make his living. He's only popular because every time Milo says something inflammatory, liberals react, oftentimes trying to shut him down, which only emboldens his supporters to speak loudly and with more fervor and with more vitriol and with more hate. Bullies only have power when they notice that the results of their actions give them power. Without the fuel Milo gets in the form of angry leftists, his career means nothing. The only other thing he can do with his life is be a fluffer for low-budget twink porn. I am pleading right now with every person who advocates social justice. Every feminist, every POC, every LGBTQIA plus activist. I'm talking to you now. Messaging is just as important as the message. The aggressive tactics some of y'all use, from the vitriolic callouts to shutting down the expression of people who disagree with you, are turning people off. Outside of your bubble, people are laughing at you. And that's a shame because the causes you care about are too important. And when people don't take you seriously, those causes won't be taken seriously either. There are a lot of people who can be swayed towards your beliefs. Reach out to your fellow human beings. You do not have a duty to put up with personal attacks. You do not have a duty to handhold people as they educate themselves about the issues surrounding our society. But you do have a duty to your country and your society to change the way you communicate about these things. You do have a responsibility to fight for what you believe in without empowering the same fascist fringe that put Donald Trump in the White House today. Progressives, we have to practice the same compassion and consistency that we preach. Or else, the progress that we need will never come. Well, the left has created by doing this, the alt-right, me, Donald Trump, and a whole army of disaffected liberals, its own former supporters, who are tired of being told what they can think, say, do, how they can dress, how they can speak, who they can hang out with, you know, what belief systems they can have. And it has alienated an entire young generation from left-wing politics.